This is Dust War Journals, your number one source for all news and discussions dust related. My name is Johannes, and with me today are my co hosts Magnus. Well, uh, you, you know about the forum and stuff, so I don't have to yeah, mention hopefully. that anymore. Whoa, are you on forums? What? 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 <laughs> yeah, this is the news to me. It <laughs> happens. Oh, okay. It happens. Well, I am never on forums, so don't look for me. I am in disguise if I am there. And of course, I'm Luda, as you all have figured out by now. The invisible Luda. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I can't. Often see, time. often heard, seldom seen. Yeah, well, that's that's probably me. Yeah. Silent but deadly, not <laughs> no the opposite. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. V- vocal but non lethal. Cuddly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something like that. No, I w- truly wish I were on the forums more because uh, you seem to have a lot of fun there and you seem to experience good shit. But uh, I'm just lazy about it, or I'm just. I don't want to sit by the computer when I get home. No, of course, that's uh, that's ve- very di- different just how you want to spend your time, of course. Yeah. That is <laughs> so. sort, of, sort of how I feel. I mean, I, I don't have, I don't use Facebook uh, because I don't want all those, uh, you know, reminders in the yeah. phone. And, and, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time on their phones and I'm guessing... A lot of the time goes to Facebook and some of the other similar places. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm pretty guilty so, of that. Uh, which I think ev- ev- anyone who has uh, read the official Dust group on Facebook, <laughs> they know that I spend a lot of time on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm sure it has a lot of positive sides as well. For me personally, I'm uh, I tend to enjoy those discussion forums. I can go in there whenever I feel like it or have the time and... And read a little bit, write a little bit, and then I can just, you know, turn it off and do something else. So that's just me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a healthy way of looking at it. But it's good we have Johannes that does the other part, because uh, we need someone who's out there uh, answering all the t- uh, questions from the newbies, the veterans, and everyone who wants mm-hmm. to have an yeah. answer. And, and, and I do have my wife who tries to pull me outside once in a while to mm. get some air, get some sun. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so how's the month been treating you guys? Well, well, it's uh, it's been a good month actually. I've done a few hobby things. Uh, mostly, actually, I've spent some time putting up my sort of own blog website. Um, just some some like a hobby project, basically. <laughs> um, kind of meta hobby in a way. <laughs> yes, sort of. This isn't uh, this this site is will be like my personal blog, so it will not be tied to dust directly. Of course, I'm going to write some stuff about dust and some some hobby articles as well. But this is, I think, mostly going to be about other games, actually, like different board games that I like. Uh, yeah, so I spent some time with that, and also I've, um, you know, uh, trundling along with my British sort of uh, USMC force. Uh, I tried to paint some kind of camo, but I wasn't really happy with it, so I, I went back and, and read it and, um, did it a bit different, basically. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you. I hope I will be f- uh, have something finished in a week from now when we are going to have a small event. Uh, at least something of that newer stuff that I've made. Great. So I'm not, yeah, I won't promise anything, but I hope I hope I will have something finished at least. Really yeah. cool, yeah. Yeah, if you have only a squad, it would be nice just to see uh, in your new direction, so to speak, with your Brits. So that looked good. Yeah. I've been kind of uh, looking forward to this this little mini tournament as well. So, mm-hmm. so uh, I've been working on not really painting stuff, unfortunately, because I just hadn't had the time. Uh, but I've been at least <laughs> at least been buying stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm pl- I'm planning on uh, running an all mercenary army, nice. um, and uh, of course this is going to be just a fifty point tournament. Yeah. So it's a bit easier. <laughs> but uh, I've been wanting to do that for a long time. And even if they're not complete as a faction, they don't have their command team yet. But still, I want to try it, especially now when we have like the meat grinder and the pulverizer and those walkers that can really put the hurt on some vehicles, which I felt that the mercenaries have needed for a, for quite a while. So yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be an interesting event, I think. 
Well, uh, nice to hear you guys talk about it. Uh, this is something I put together spur of a moment uh, next uh, weekend, uh, 50 points. Uh, just, uh, I just felt I wasn't gaming enough, so I, I, well, someone has to be in charge, so let's, let it be me. If we're odds number, I will uh, uh, take part as well. But uh, if, if not, I'm just, uh, well, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. For me, uh, it has been quite, uh, well, not as hectic as uh, I would like it to be, but uh, at least we've had, uh, I was on that tournament, LDD, I was trying that out, and that was a, a lot of fun. Um, you, you really get frustrated, though, when you realize halfway through the game where you're playing against the guy who won it and he won it fair and square I'm, i have no grudge about it by no means but then you realized why didn't i just think one more time about my army choice because i had like two big votans because i thought it would be cool to have two big votans but and perhaps people don't know we had a sideboard of 25 points so you could switch around because it was severe weather and stuff like that in the game uh or could be and I just realized afterwards, especially when I played this, uh, when I played Ulf, who won it, uh, and he played all this humongous amount of Russians, if I just had, and uh, it was just infantry also, he had one command vehicle and only infantry. Oh. And I mean, <laughs> hunting him with Votans, it ain't effective. <laughs> no. Even if it's a Votan too, it was like, uh, couldn't I just had uh, like the Koenig's uh, Loth, or could I just had a, perhaps a Flame Walker, I mean, Flame Luther, or something like that? Basically anything yeah. but Votan. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. I had a huge fun with it. And when I could play them in fire, because the line of sight was good, it was immense to have to vote on I mean it scares the shit out of people but uh, perhaps I could actually made it a game and perhaps Ulf would have been sweating a little bit uh, because we just looked at our armies and for at least for me it was like okay you're winning this game uh, let's just see how on how many turns yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was like yeah, I, I got second place, so I, I'm not, definitely not complaining. I was, I was no, very and, happy with it. And I think that that's the, the most important thing, I think, for me is just to have fun. To bring an army that you think is going to be fun to play. Yeah. So, and it, it seems like you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a zombie <laughs> army, more or less, but but with extra Vortans. And I also had to switch around with, uh, you know, that uh, paratrooping guy, Rolf, and uh, a few of his guys. Oh, yes, yeah, that's also um, another point. There were no faction bonus. Yeah. Yeah. So so you could do that. Uh, but, that but that's you, actually yeah. how I would not play the Bloidkreutz from now on, even though, because I made 100 points of pure zombie mayhem army, I kill you with Frank von Stein uh, kind of army. And then I did 25 extras, which were to combat airplanes and stuff like that. So I could just still, because I had the new Votan too, so I had the firepower now on range with my regular Bloitkreutz. So only I only needed the air anti-air thing, and that was Rolf and his uh, one squad of paratroopers and a sniper beside, uh, you know, Yuki, or what's her name now again. Uh, so... Um, so, so I, I just think that is a very balanced, okay army to play. If it's not severe weather and your paratroopers can't land and stuff like that and blah, 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 blah. blah. But, but then, well, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, and this was a very interesting uh, uh, format uh, as well with, with having that sideboard. So you get, a, get to, to see the opponent's army. Of course, you don't know what your opponent will switch, but you get the general idea and especially... Stuff like that. If you see that, okay, this guy has no aircraft at all in his army. Okay, so I can just leave my anti-aircraft off the table. Yeah, uh, because, and I, I actually liked it a little bit more than two armies that we usually play. Because if there's at least, there's a possibility, I think, this is bigger. If you have two lists, you can make two extreme lists. Yeah. And the one, the one that, um, the one is the, your preferred list. And then when you face the thing that you can't handle, you know what that will be. So you have the other list that can handle that army. So you get them. Um, you go on top on every list or spread. Mm -hmm. but when you only have 25 points to change around that gives you at least some options when yeah you get a core yeah. and then some flexibility 
Yeah, and when the crazy bastard comes with five shoppers, you're still dead. But I mean, <laughs> like, it's but but you get at least a fighting chance because you yeah. have some anti air. Yeah, I, I, board, I like so. that idea actually. Mm. It's uh, I think it's a very good idea. Uh, I, I, well, I did not attend to this tournament, mm. but hopefully, hopefully, more tournaments with this format will be played. So yeah, yeah, uh, we I know one. Yeah, uh, that will be coming up. Should we take that yeah. right now, or should we take that later? We, we can uh, save it for the yeah, tournament we'll talk at the end. Yeah, we will. Uh, I can just before we go yeah, to the to the new. I also had some kind of new developments in the hobby kind of sphere for myself. I actually got uh, a 3D printer. Ooh, yeah. wow. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I have to learn how to make uh, models myself. So at the moment I've just been printing out stuff I found on uh, like thingiverse.com and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's it's really, really cool stuff. <laughs> Yeah, this is extremely good quality. I've seen another friend who has a perhaps then a lesser 3D printer than yours. Uh, his is good, but he is nowhere near the oh. quality and crispness of your shit. And that's this interesting is, because uh, I actually literally got the cheapest one I could find. <laughs> it ooh. was about uh, 200 euros ah. or 250 dollars for those <laughs> using those. So it's really really cheap the kind of downside is that it's slow so uh, like this tank for instance that i'm showing the guys i can put up some pictures if people are interested Mm -hmm. took something like five or six hours to print Mm. so i have it i don't even have it at home at the moment i have it um, in the kitchen uh, on at work so I can you yeah, just right, right. well when I do my get my morning coffee or my morning tea I just put it <laughs> start it and start it to printing something mm-hmm. and then it's in in another room and it does the noise doesn't uh, affect anyone, affect or, anyone yeah. else and, and this right. is awesome because yeah. I actually have a bunch of STL files Ooh. that are very suitable to dust I think some of them might require like a rescaling or yeah. I don't know but that's that's very very simple to do yeah. so uh, but some of the stuff I've I've found um, also I found online uh, look absolutely awesome yeah. so and I'm going to throw them at you and you yeah, can Yeah just... I'm going to experiment <laughs> definitely so yeah. it's it's a learning curve definitely it's a lot to take in and a lot to learn but it's uh, it's very fun this one isn't the pure scale for epic it's too big uh, no so i, I some... think that might be too uh, I, I, for those who are wondering what yeah, i've yeah, shown well, sorry, here is sorry. some uh, some I, 40k yeah. stuff that i found on thingiverse uh, but i've tried to scale it for the new adeptus titanicus game uh-huh. uh, and mm, i think yeah, this yeah. tank is too big but i think maybe uh, the i printed a, an old style warhound i think that's about right we don't know because the real ones haven't been <laughs> released yet so <laughs> But I prefer this old uh, boxy style. It looks like a cross between a factory and a, like a, one of those industrial mining loaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, you see, <laughs> yeah, just looks, hauling super like cool. gravel and stuff. It's uh, I, I just love that chunky aesthetic of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so true. This is uh, one of the best they've ever done. So it's it's a, it's a very very beautiful little sculpt there. So yeah, so I'm, I'm mm-hmm. hoping we I can find some use for it at least at start just printing terrain stuff and and such for dust. I think mm-hmm. that would be a very good use for it. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go over to some more dust news. And there's been a ton of stuff <laughs> released this past month. Uh, some of it we've already talked a bit about. The Spetsnaz and the Andak army box, for instance. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, like we said last episode, these are absolutely excellent if you want to get started with these factions. Hell yeah. 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 This, just yeah, ev- every unit in those boxes are your staples that you really want in your army. So perfect to build around. And of course, if you have missed it, we are actually running a, a giveaway on these two boxes. So if you're interested in winning one of them, then check out uh, that giveaway at dustwardjournals.com. And so, there, the, the, the deadline for that is like two weeks from now or something like that? Yeah, from yeah. when we are recording. So there's still time to get in on the action there. Like, yeah, we're really getting some nice uh, contributions also. Yeah, for absolutely. There's, there's going, it's going to be really, really hard to pick some winners here. Yeah. Uh, then we have the Luftwaffe Raketen Truppe Tank Hunter Squad. And this is one that I know that 
a lot of people have been waiting for for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we talked about this last episode as well. It's all yeah. the the final puzzle piece piece to make the Luftwaffe uh, yeah, partly uh, that, uh, partly yeah. that, but also because the artwork for these units have been available yeah. since the start of the game. Yeah, there's sort of like icons for dust, and they yeah. haven't been available until now. So, so uh, it's it's wonderful to finally see them. Yeah. So it's basically these and the Japanese that have been teased for like ever, and soon we are getting the Japanese as well. Mm-hmm. So that's really really cool. But those, those actually raket and troopmen, you, you you those I seriously can think of buying just to have on the shelf just to have them just because they are so iconic so to yeah. speak so uh, uh hopefully i can squeeze some extra crowns from my wallet sometime soon and, and just have one squad of them at least because they are they are very good yeah now we have the end act loki slash loth so this is uh, one of those deals where if you buy the model kit or the primed version you get both uh, versions get both uh, weapon mm-hmm. options mm-hmm. and uh, well I think we talked about this uh, a bit last episode as well the the fact that well it's kind of a base unit as well I can def- I can definitely see running at least two of these in an army yeah 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 one could actually just say that it's probably the best German walker you could have you could you could field yeah, because uh, it's very cheap and it's very versatile because yeah. it can do damage to most things, <laughs> the Loki. Definitely. Uh, and then we have the, the big one, Gregor, the defector, the big ape man <laughs> himself. Mm, yeah. And yeah, there's been a lot of speculation about this uh, before we saw the card. Is it going to be Soldier 3, Soldier 4, uh, Soldier 2 even, since it's a gorilla? What's, what's going to be the faction? And yeah, now we know he's both got the Blutkreutz card and he's got a mercenary card. And the mm-hmm. interesting thing is that the mercenary card cannot be used by an Axis army. Yeah, and that, that is <laughs> yeah, very he's good. He's a defector, he's a traitor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's kind of interesting because that means that you cannot use him in a non Blutkreutz Axis army without risking the faction bonus. Mm-hmm. So that's very thematic and very cool, I yeah. think. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, you can really see the Wehrmacht uh, general it's like very skeptical against anything that's blood cross. Okay, we fight with them because the orders comes up from up top, but I'm not going to use them in my army. They are, I mean the the, the fallout or what do you call them? They they are not the the proper German soldiers. So it must be yeah. And also, I mean, after he defected and and run away from the run away from the uh, blood cross, he's probably. A hunted gorilla, basically. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And he um, don't want to get back into that cage, yeah. I'm sure. And if we talk uh, briefly about the stats, he is a soldier four. Yeah. So, he, and he is damage resilient, and he has six, six. health points. He's going to be a bastard <laughs> to take care of. Yeah, I think he. Uh, I think he's like the second most durable hero in the game, right after Winter's Child. Mm. That's probably true, yeah. Well, we, I, to me, I like to wait and see about it. I, I see the stats and I, I understand why people re, uh, react to it. Uh, I, I think both he's the 10th anniversary special. So if he's special in all ways, I ha- in every way, I, don't, I have no problem with it. Uh, perhaps he will turn out to be too good so people will be moaning and forbidding him on tournaments that is a possibility but uh i I like to try to kill him a few times first before uh because uh, at least at least uh, i'm i'm still only halfway into my superhero hate i mean i know i mean it's just it's winter child still is a little bit little tipsy yeah, too. Well, I mean, yeah but <clears throat> sorry victory is easy to kill yeah. as we all know so but uh, uh, if we look at the stats uh, for for his weapons um we has the he has the normal panzer gloves that most of the gorillas have yeah so that's not that special really no. the special thing is the auto cannon with range eight Quite a lot, uh, well, it's 4-1 for most infantry, 3-1 one, 
infantry four. He's an expert with it, and he has the salvo skill, so he can double the dice. But mm. then he will have to reroll. Yeah. And this is this is an okay weapon. Yeah. I would say the the big uh, thing that this has is that it has expert and it has range eight. Yeah. So he doesn't need to come close. Uh, and that is probably where he will shine, that he can kind of be a hit-and-run sniping kind of character. Yeah, but would you... Who would... Well, of course, I could perhaps figure out one or two people I know, about the 50 or 80 people I know play Dust, who would use Gregor as a sniper sneak kind of guy. <laughs> but if you play that big monkey... You're gonna want to stick him in the middle, of don't course. You? So, of course, you want I, to. Yeah, as I see, the most <laughs> most people. I, 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 well, of course, yeah, you probably could use him as a, some sort of medium vehicle sniper. Uh, well, uh, for, at the moment, since he's gorilla and soldier four, he's got no unit he can be joined to, so yeah. he has to walk around by himself. And he isn't really that fast. He don't have the charge skill, so he's you know he's not that much of a threat, I would say, at the moment. That autogun is is good, no question about it. And he is only ten points, right? Yeah, yeah ten mm-hmm. points. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's per- ba- he's basically free if you use him in a faction b- army. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah I would say personally, I think he's on the cheap side not that much but a little bit but the really interesting thing will be if there is some kind of unit released in the future that he can join yeah. then, then that's going to be a monster yeah that could definitely uh, I'm tip telling the scales. you he's yeah. going to be a monster if you can join him to a unit well there might be a monster he will join then if we think about that <laughs> experiment you know because that's the only thing that I can think about that might be turning into a unit 4 I mean, we we don't know what the, we don't know that. So no, no, no. But no. but it, but it, that would be in my mind a monster could have be like what else could come? No, Ooh, yeah. Well, perhaps they can yeah, supercharge let, some fucking monsters. Let's say for they him, release a blood court unit with the with the heavy armor stuff, and and he can join them. I mean that he's going to be a beast. Yeah, yeah. but 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 I would seriously. I seriously think that then, if that would happen, then uh, both us and uh, Paolo would have been on a serious bender. Because, like, uh, the type the, the Germans only have Type 3 of uh, armor class. Okay, he is an exception. But that's... I, I just don't see how they... Why would they give... Do a unit four for the Germans. That would be sabotage, I would say. Yeah, I kind of agree uh, that, that that's one of the things that makes the Steel Guard unique. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm kind of hoping. I, I'm thinking for that reason that it probably won't release an, a unit for him. And I also, for gameplay reason, for balance, I hope that they don't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because Both of this those. Uh, and it, uh, just fluff wise, it it also makes more sense that this guy is a loner that yeah. he doesn't go around and join Definitely. units. Definitely. Um, and if you, if we just talk a bit about the model itself <laughs> for a bit, because please, please, yeah, this is just a fantastic, fantastic model. Yeah. Um, I know people have reacted towards uh, the price. He is quite expensive for being just a lone hero. Um, but what people should realize is that he is well at least twice as big as all other heroes basically Mm -hmm. um so he's a big chunky model yeah yeah yeah. you see that on the pictures when you see the base and his stone is swelling out on all directions Mm -hmm. and he's swelling out of the stone and and the auto uh, gun is as long as he is tall (laughs) oh i thought you were going for something else there for a moment (laughs) but okay sorry uh well, yes. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do, Magnus. I'm sure you do. Yeah, but uh, be well, careful of that salvo. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's Gregor. Yeah, that's Gregor for you. <laughs> yeah, really cool. And we are going to see a lot of him, I think, because uh, most of the people in our playgroup has ordered him. And I'm not sure if anyone has received him yet, but... Mm. Uh, a lot of people have him coming up, at least. Ah. Well, I, I'm tapped out, so I'm, I'm economizing my wife for... Because I, I have to save every cent till Christmas and the oh, Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so fortunately, but uh, perhaps he will just pop up with the Japanese. Yeah. Among some <laughs> you never know, you never yeah. know. Holding a rail gun or something, no? Yeah. Next up, we have Magda and the Pink Flamingo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we kind of hinted at this unit uh, in uh, our last episode. And I must, I must say, personally, I just love this walker and i love the combo you can create with the walker and the hero magda mm-hmm. yeah um, so the walker itself it's basically a captured uh, german flam luther mm-hmm. but kind of converted in yeah. a mercenary style but the really cool thing about it is well part of part of it is that it has three big flamethrowers mm-hmm. and it can fire at two units at the same time mm-hmm. um but the really cool thing is the pilot ability that you you gain when Magda is piloting mm-hmm. uh, the Flamingo. Because it's kind of two parts, uh, yeah. a two-part skill. And I, I just mm-hmm. love that they're experimenting with this kind of stuff. That if, uh, let's say exactly how it is worded, do you have the have the cards i don't have the card in front of me now no unfortunately i don't have either, no, but but I, I, the, the gist of it is that if she is moving mm-hmm. with the pink flamingo she gets then she, she gets a cover save yeah. even if she's in the open and if she's standing still and just do a normal attack yeah. or a sustained attack then she gains expert yeah <laughs> so so you want to do both yes and that's, <laughs> that's so good because you are torn between it should i advance and take out that juicy target Way over because I have was some it, cover, or should I just stay still here and massacre it, this one? It was sorry. Was it yeah. really expert skill? Wasn't it plus one to the range of the? Flamers? Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's yeah. that's true. It's mm. plus one to the range. So it yeah, goes yeah, from yeah, range so two to yeah, range yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. yes, that's mm-hmm. true. And range three is is really yeah. range nasty three for, for a flamethrower oh, yes, yes, is sorry, sorry. horrible, mm-hmm. and yeah. especially she, since she has two of them. Well, you have she has three, but two of them are mm-hmm. twin linked, yeah, yeah. so to say, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. But you can fire in two different directions with mm-hmm. them or at two different targets. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's 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 going to be very very fun to try this thing out. It's still uh, only a level 3 walker yeah, I mean, like well, most of the uh, mercenaries. But that, so, balance wise it should be that. I it think is, so I think too. Very... And it's quite a lot of points if you mm. invest with both the walker and the hero but i think that that does make sense yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it's going to be really fun to yeah, see how this I, I, I also like this very much i look forward very much to playing both with it and against it actually because it gives <laughs> like, uh, if you're playing with this unit it gives you a lot of interesting choices how to play it you can play it defensively and really you know guard objectives or guard your command squads or whatever or you can play it very offensively and really try to use that that cover save you know rush up yeah. somewhere in the and flank just, or in the middle and just and yes when you get to those moments when you are uh, like sitting on an objective and you have a unit that it's uh, threatening you three point three squares away and so, or am i going to just stand still and shoot them or do i advance and shoot them so i get the cover save mm-hmm. so there's there's a lot of interesting choices there uh, yeah um, this is a very very cool unit and i hope they do experiment some more with with that kind of mm-hmm. abilities in yeah. the future yeah uh, next up we have the cultist fire squad so mm-hmm. not really much to say there it's the exact same unit that we've seen in the start box for the cultists yeah so yeah. cheap simple and effective swarm unit basically yeah and finally the mythos can start you know like not need to use that many mercenaries mm-hmm. anymore yeah, exactly uh, yeah, and that, that's a very good thing, I, I believe, too, for the, for the cultists, that you can do that kind of swarm army. That's what I'm looking forward to. Like, maybe run one of the big uh, Cthulhu spawn, and then a lot of cultists and those little armored cars and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I think that could be a really, really cool army. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's also, I would say, like twofold. Both gameplay-wise, you could make like a better army, but also... By the looks of it, it looks a lot cooler to have more cultists than not. I don't know, at least for me, it looks kind of strange having... I've seen a few of those armies with some big monsters and then a lot of mercenaries. It, I don't mm. know. It, it, yeah, it, it does seem weird. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know that uh, Paolo and Olivia have talked about that at a later point when they've released more units for the cultists that they might introduce a rule that the cultist cannot use mercenaries mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but since 
they more or less have to use mercenaries at this point. Mm. Yeah. Uh, they've chosen to allow it. So mm. we'll see if that happens in the future. Yeah. Then we yeah. have uh, a terrain piece, the Cthulhu Shrine. <laughs> so this is the really big one. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, uh, it's hard to see, unfortunately, on the, on the Dust Game page exactly the size of this thing in comparison with others. I would love to see that. Mm. But, uh, but the sculpt looks really amazing. I've ordered one myself. I can't wait to get my hands on it and try to say, and I'm probably going to do an unboxing video so people can take a look at it. Uh, as usual yeah, with the uh, yeah. yeah, as usual with the uh, with the studio's terrain pieces, the the sculpt is just amazing. And uh, talking about sculpts, we also have two re-releases of some old classic units. Basically, it's Angela the sniper for the Axis and Rosie the mechanic for the Allies. And this is not only uh, a re-release uh, that they got new models. There are new models. But there are also new cards and new stats for these classic little units. Yeah, mm. small, interesting variations uh, on those heroes. Absolutely. Uh, I, I really like them both a lot, actually. I think uh, those small tweaks, I mean, they are very similar to their former or their original um, version. But those small changes, really, if you look carefully, they... I mean, you can use them in slightly different ways, especially Rosie, uh, I would say. But um, but I think yeah. also, I think Angela as well. And I think the um, the uh, Radio Free Sferograd podcast pointed this out, and I thought it was interesting, is that she has m- more opportunity to hit vehicles now. Yeah. And with the killing spree rule, that could actually be very effective. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. So I, I can actually see her as a, a potential threat for light vehicles, and I don't think that the old version really did that. No, that's true. That's yeah, that's one of the reasons. And also, um, her rifle has longer range now, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so it's yes. basically she she's got a better rifle <laughs> yeah. since her last outing, and it's it's a big motherfucking rifle. So it's good that it can do some damage on vehicles because you, you get that impression when you look at the model that if she just hits it or to take out something, uh, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, huge. I actually think when you know it's like when they are like these sculpts. Perhaps this is too crazy of a rule. I it just came to me, uh, so perhaps it's just stupid. But I think that yeah, she hasn't. She, she doesn't do any damage on vehicle six and seven, which is totally fine for me. But I still think that she should be able to roll for hit on those vehicles, and if she hit, you roll for a possible damage on the critical hit chart, because you could hit a window, you could hit a pilot, you could <laughs> hit that's something. a really cool so, idea. But it could be nice. Just I can't. I can't damage this vehicle, but I can have a lucky putt shot because this is a both her and the uh, t- the frog uh, sniper rifles. I feel those should be able to just have a, that possibility of a critical. Yeah, you're hit. rolling, and if you hit, you don't do any damage. Hull no. damage, no. no. But, but you, you roll get a chance to actually yeah. hit some. I don't know, some pipes or some. So that's yeah. a really, really cool <laughs> idea. I, I, yeah. I think we should try that uh, at some point. Yes, to. To see what happens. Yeah, see it. what yeah, happens yeah, yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah, and I haven't started on the whiskey. Yet, no, exactly. So what is it? <laughs> yeah, it's still early. So yeah. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it just happens. Yeah. All right. Let's talk a bit about Rosie. She also got a new uh, yeah. a new card. The big change, I think, for for this version of Rosie is that she's Soldier One. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because that means that suddenly she can join up with the Desert Scorpions or the USMC. Yeah. Uh, and buff some of those units uh, quite well, I think. Uh, the downside, perhaps, is her movement, 2-4, which doesn't gel with the, uh, most USMC, at least, which are faster than that. But, mm. especially, especially since she's now uh, she's expert with both her bazooka and her wrench, yeah. that could be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I wouldn't have mind... I, I love that She's got the opportunity to be a soldier one, and I so that so I interpreted Paolo when he released all the renders a few months back. Uh, 
you're still okay to play the old Soldier 2 version. Oh yeah, of course. The, the old version is still absolutely valid. And that one is so good with, to the uh, Allied Infantry 2, at least for me, it's been a favorite mod. I just, it's an out to include for me if I play Allied Infantry 2 because she really transfers an Allied Infantry 2 unit to something more, something better, something useful, no matter what squad you're choosing. Uh, so I'm, I hope that she will have this uh, new card with the Soldier 2 and expert on Basoka as well, because that would also be very good for the Allied Infantry 2 soldiers. So it's very, very possible. We have seen uh, sculpts mm -hmm. of Rosie with both different poses and with more uh, yeah. armor. So she, there is a Soldier 2, a new Soldier 2 version coming. Yeah, and I mini. suspect that that's going to be updated as well, uh, stats-wise. Yeah, I hope, seriously hope so, because uh, it's not the Infantry 1 Allied that needs the boost. It's the Infantry 2 still. <laughs> I, I keep fighting the <laughs> the, the losing battle on that one but but it, it, they are still playable so uh especially with rosie and why not just have that expert grenade that could be yeah really tasty with the combat squad or something like that yeah, yeah. absolutely and finally just a few days ago there was kind of a big release with a, a lot of new th things or rather um a lot of old things we released in new boxes. So we have the Heavy Grenadier HQ box, the headquarters box for the Axis, uh, including the Heavy Grenadier Command Squad and da -da -da, Lara. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a good opportunity for people to get their hands on Lara if they've mm. had trouble before, because, uh, yeah, I think this is the first time she's been available in a long time to purchase um besides that uh, besides yeah. the premium version or in a yeah. of in one of the old uh, yeah set she was in sets. the uh, the revised corset revised i think corset, yeah. yeah yeah and this is perhaps a little bit too late to respond to what you said but i still just want to just make put it out there don't put your hand on Laura. It's not good. <laughs> Ask her to join you, okay? <laughs> Let's try to be civilized, guys, okay? Giannis is a little bit jumping the gun, uh, and it's not her I, gun yeah. at the moment, so just yeah, please. It's, it's, I, I don't know why Laura just <laughs> does things to me. Uh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> she does things to many people. <laughs> okay, sorry. That's true. Yeah, so... That, that's a really cool box if you want to run with the Heavy Grenadiers, mm. definitely. Yeah. Um, another the, one interesting box that's been released is the Devastator slash Punisher 2. Yeah? Yeah. That um, makes me wonder. It does, because mm. it, it it shows the card for the Devastator. It's uh, the same card that mm. we used to. It does not, unfortunately, yet show the card for the mm. Punisher 2. We haven't yet seen that. But uh, the kind of speculations on the internet, if you go by the look of the chassis, um, it has the same model as the Devastator, uh, it looks like it's going to have one less heavy machine gun than the old Punisher 1 model. Mm -hmm. and, it and it does look like it probably will not have any transport capacity. Mm -hmm. So it's so, like 10 points? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, but somewhere between 22 and 24, maybe? Mm. I mean, if you if you remove a weapon and you remove the, the passenger's capacity, it needs to be, I would say, a lot cheaper, actually. Yeah. Because those uh, both of them are worth points. Yeah, of, because... of course, but it's, it's still a very, very heavy target to get rid of. I think in, in this case with the Punisher... I'm not sure that the transport capacity is as valuable as it is in other units because it's a very slow walker. It, that depends on who you're playing. That's we have true. some and expert players with that Punisher who can make your life fucking miserable mm. and just want to quit mm. dust almost. <laughs> uh, because they... Sorry. I, and uh, this means that they could potentially bring more Punishers yeah. if they're cheaper. And the other interesting uh, thing to point out also is that if it goes to 25 or less points, then suddenly it gets into that space where you can use it in a faction army mm -hmm. at 100 points yeah. Yeah. without losing your faction bonus. Yeah, that's also interesting and cool. Uh, the only s saving grace for this is that it's so goddamn big that you can't field a lot of them because they will get stuck. If you do play at least like we do in Sweden, you can't field more than at least one because we cram. Even though in Linköping, when they cram a little bit less terrain, 
it would still be hard feeling fielding more than a maximum of two. Yeah. Because that was actually something, I'm sorry, I'm just going back to something I perhaps I shouldn't, but we realized this when we talked about latest tournament here, the Lin Shipping that I was on, that Lin Shipping has a tendency of taking a little less terrain than we do in Gothenburg. So oh, yeah. uh, mm. they were so starting to see two different type of tournament wise and it's yeah, but that's nice yeah that's very very good but but still even on that board the punisher is we, we yeah we they have a hard are time they are slow and they take up a lot of space so yeah. they can they can sometimes be a problem if they yeah, get they in the way each other. if you yeah if they die in the wrong place yeah <laughs> that's, that's hell that's hell yeah. Uh, Absolutely, uh, but yeah, this Punisher Two card is going to be super interesting to see exactly mm. what's changed and what's not changed. Yeah, and if you buy that model kit that one probably will do in the far future, uh, then you will be left with two Devastators since I already have one. And when do you play two Devastators? <laughs> ah, that will be a challenge. What type of army will this be? <laughs> it, it seems. Um, uh, well, I don't know. You, please, please, if you have a, a suggestion. Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> For a future episode. Yeah. I think. yeah. <laughs> you, you only, oh, sorry. I, you only need one of those phaser bunker in between. And oh, yeah, of course. And then you cut off all escapes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Next up, the Tropical Natasha and Anatoly for the Spetsnaz. Mm -hmm. So this is the Gatling Tropical KV-47 and the Tesla KV-47 for mm -hmm. the Spetsnaz. Um, and these have not been available uh, together before. They've only been uh, available... At the Kickstarter. Yeah, in, mm -hmm. through the Kickstarter. And I think they've also been available um, for purchase through other means. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how it is uh, from the studio themselves. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is the first time where you can get them with both of the weapon options in one box if you mm -hmm. buy the Prime yep. model kit. Yeah. And, of course, uh, KV-47 with Teslas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that one. Uh, it's it's one of my favorites. I only have two, but uh, also because they had been a little bit hard getting hands on, and uh, uh, I haven't played the Spetsnaz so much. Only once the last two and a half, three years or something like that. So, but if I would were, were playing so much, if I would have kept playing the Spetsnaz as much as I had when I did back when they came, uh, then I would have had probably four of that. that Anatoly now because they are I, I just love it he's, he's he doesn't win you he wins you battle but he's not he doesn't he doesn't do that much damage but he, he shoots far enough he's just about right for 12 points he makes just the amount of fucking irritation to my opponent uh, I've never seen anyone play against me with an, uh, no one I played the Anatol who has been okay, satisfied uh, afterwards. I am going to confess something. Yes, please. I am very happy that you haven't played this one more because I really hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this Anatoly. I remember quite a while back uh, when we played one of our first like tournaments here in Gothenburg. Uh, I think it was uh, Days of Dust number two two or something like that and you played this guy and this was the one basically that ruined that game for me <laughs> i lost that game oh that's wonderful yeah. memories tell us more tell us more and <laughs> after that i haven't really seen you play that one <laughs> and i have always wondered why <laughs> well why he, why he has retired in a blaze of it, glory it's, it's been a mystery to me actually and and you know I've said, okay, that's fine. I have no problem with you not <laughs> playing this guy. <laughs> when you go back to uh, German Type 3 infantry, uh, again, at least when you play me with that, I promise you he will be back. He, he, <laughs> he's right. waiting for you. Right. Uh, so but, that's, that's a response to my yes, army. Yes, okay, yes. Okay, oh, yes. I get it. I get uh, it. <laughs> didn't, didn't I tell you? I called Paul and asked just to t make that. No, no, sorry. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, finally, we have for the Axis the Storm Luther, Stummel, and Prince Luther box. So, same deal here uh, one chassis and three different weapon options. And uh, this makes me very happy, mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta say. This has also been one of those units that's been hard to get a hold of since the Kickstarter. And it's really good units, especially the Stummel, I think, is just an, an underrated vehicle. We, we don't really see much of these. Here, here. In play, uh, unfortunately, 
But I'm hoping now that they are available that we are going to see them because they are interesting, they are cool looking, and they are very effective. And they're, they're basically the only real uh, troop transports for the Axis. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Sturmel is so goddamn great. It's just probably because they can't get hold of them. The same with them. Mm-hmm. I, I, I never realized why they don't play them. Uh, it's just because they were fixated with the fact that they have to put their command squad in it and they break a little bit too yeah, easy. Yeah, with the, with the Prince the Luther, yeah, that yeah, could but, be it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, even with the Stummel. I, mm. I mean, you could take the yeah. command squad and put it in a Stummel. That could be quite yeah. funny as well. But still, for some reason, just because it breaks or something, it's just, oh, <gasps> it's a monster. Play it more. Yeah, they, they are actually pretty good. Uh, I mean, for me... Th- I would prefer them to be vehicle four, basically, because they look fairly big. They, I mean, I just know by the by the looks of them, I would prefer them to be vehicle four. Yeah, I agree. They they uh, should they should be a little more durable of, from what they look. But but of course they would need to be more points also if they were if they were vehicle fours. True. But they are uh, open topped. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. It's just for for me, they look so big. They mm-hmm. And they have those big armored, uh, like, shirts and like plates. When, when you compare uh, to the other Axis vehicles that are also Vehicle 3s, mm-hmm. I don't know. I get the feeling that the, these should be at least one level higher. I'm, I'm not speaking about gameplay wise at all. Uh, here. I'm I, just looking at them. Yeah, okay, I, are these, you I know, the you. same size or not? Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That that's that's for me. But gameplay wise, they are actually pretty good. I think they are better than a lot of players think they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, that would be my kind of challenge to access players out there. Try these out. Um, that, personally, that, yeah, yeah. that could po- probably be one of the reasons that people don't want to use them because they don't know how they work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They haven't seen be. other. Yeah. People play them, yeah. and they don't really know how they are going to use them themselves. And yeah, and, and like you said about the command, um, the, the Prince Luther, mm-hmm. uh, it's got the command vehicle. Don't don't really stare on Too that. Too blindly on that. Yeah, exactly, no, no. because the weapon loadout on this one is is pretty good. Actually, mm-hmm. yeah. you don't have to use it as a command vehicle just because it has that skill. Or you can bring two. Use one as a yeah. command vehicle and the other for other yeah. duties. And I, I like your old idea, Magnus, that that you had a, a, quite a while back that you used a Stummel, which has. A, 12 slots for passengers. Yeah. <laughs> fill it up with four uh, monkey squads and you get a, a stumel full of the army of the 12 monkeys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, re- yeah. I would really love to to see that actually realized someday. Mm. Yeah, and uh, well, just point on that uh, armor class, but I think it would be in- more interesting if they would give it two more lives. So it perhaps eight lives because then it won't break under one shot. From most, uh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. the instant kill weapons with the. But if <clears throat> if uh, if my Lavernia shoots this and actually manages yeah, to hit it, yeah, that could be a possible variation. That's yeah. uh, again gameplay wise, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But just by the looks, I think they should be a bit more sturdier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Mm-hmm. cost a couple of more points. I yeah, don't know, yeah. uh, a little yeah. bit more expensive. And another point uh, that's also interesting, if you take the transport capacity of these walkers uh, into account, is the uh, the platoon that you can build with these, mm-hmm. because that's a very interesting and like strange and fun platoon. Because what it says is that if the Stummel has some, if you use this platoon, if the Stummel has passengers and it comes into close combat with another unit, then it can use the passengers close combat. So you, well, I think you can use half of them on each side. It's something like that. Mm. Um, I can't remember how it's worded. But it's something like that. But, but suddenly you have a yeah. lot more dice in close yeah, combat yeah, at yeah. least. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you can just rush over and kill stuff and then jump out and kill more stuff. Yeah, yeah so, but what would happen actually if one of those Cthulhu monsters were hitting on uh, were hitting on a Sturm yeah. Prince or, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> or a Stummel? No, but I mean, I mean, wouldn't that be quite interesting then? And it's a lot of monkeys falls out and <laughs> goes at it afterwards. I mean, I, I kind of, I kind of see like in, like picturing a small kid like trying to wrestle an ant hill. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, but but I just, just I just think that could be a fun thing. I mean, and also if if you if they don't charge in the first turn and the monkeys get to 
jump out, then a few jack drills must be good against, isn't there? They should be able to take down a Cthulhu monster, or shouldn't they? Yeah, of um, course, and we've yeah. seen that happen, actually. Have we? Oh, sorry, yeah. I've been looking the other yeah. way. Sorry. In, uh, was it LDD, like last, not not the recent one, ah, but the one yeah, before? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. it was uh, one, of the, one of the things where one of the big Cthulhu monsters charged a bunk- bunch of monkeys, mm. and the monkeys won. Mm. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, there's, there's a lot of potential with, uh, with these units, definitely. All right, let's go over to mail call. Mm. We have got a bunch of questions this time. And uh, first off, it's Daniel Woodley who asked, what do we think about the card for Gregor? Well, Dan, uh, you can probably just skip back in the yeah. show <laughs> like uh, 15 minutes and you get all you need to know about that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a cool card. Uh, Brian Keith Yunsex, do you have any... Uh, idea for something you would change in a unit stats if you could and he gives us uh, an example that you could make the Hans Otto Nina Blackhawk weapons limited ammo and volley instead of reload because that would make it a bit more realistic that mm. they just have infinite ammo and you know Brian Keith Youth if you just skip back a few moments and listen <laughs> to what we said about the sniper <laughs> rifle I think you got the answer no sorry <laughs> starting a trend here just now uh, He's always got good questions. Uh, I wish I would have read it the, before. So the I unit that about it. pops into my head immediately that I would like to change, and we, we've talked about this before, is the uh, the heavy laser grenadier squad. The three-man yeah. unit with the, with the heavy assault lasers, or what they're called. Uh, I think they they are they just need a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, I very rarely see them getting played, and I very rarely play them myself. Yeah, I, I tried to use them uh, right at the start when I just got into the game, and they never felt like they did enough for their points. So I just stopped they're, using they're, them. And they it's, aren't horrible. No, but they just you know. They just don't reach it, really, for me. Well, well, yeah, we've been on it a few times that we want the lasers to shoot at airplanes. So let's just uh, let's put a line on that once again. We want lasers to shoot at airplanes. Everyone, do you help? <laughs> this is... No, sorry, but uh, that's one. But uh, I understand the frustration about these, and I've heard a lot about the, the heavy laser grenadiers, and I, it might be that you're right, I have not played them as well as as much as I would have liked to play them. But to me, it's when you play a Bloidkreutz, because it's then when I fancy the laser. To get the Frank von Stein platoon to work, I need to have so much more else that it's... And the zombies do that stuff for me, wreck the vehicles and do what they do good. So... I don't need them in that. Yeah, because you have other things that fill that slot. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah so, but if you I need, wish I would play one a laser if, platoon. Yeah, and, but if uh, you need, if you're going to play like a laser platoon, mm-hmm. wouldn't you take the the soldier two laser guys? Yeah, I, I, would, I would thing, take. I, I would are, take both. I will have yeah, a lot I'm, of soldier twos and threes. Okay, that's uh, fair. I play, uh, I, 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 it doesn't say much because it, it was his only, I think, Russian game. But I beat this guy over here quite severely with yeah, two squads of heavy grenadiers when he played the the um, uh, the uh, guard platoon uh, okay the zombies were perhaps doing more damage but they still kept their flank and they were alive when the game was over yeah uh, just in my case i would take uh, a couple of units of the the soldier 2 laser guys mm-hmm. and Probably at least once, possibly two of the uh, support weapon lasers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 because they have like you know good roles. The, the updated card for the Soldier Two guys means that they can actually do some damage against infantry. They aren't, mm-hmm. you know, they are pretty bad at uh, shooting inf- uh, shooting vehicles, but they can handle some infantry now. And the support weapon, it's it's okay against vehicles. The the the, uh, the heavy grenadier units with three uh, assault rifles they are you know not good at shooting infantry, and they are fair they are okay at shooting like medium uh, vehicles vehicle three maybe vehicle four but more than that they will struggle so. But they they do at least okay against uh, infantry three and four. 
And also they have the damage resilience, so they could perhaps stay against one of those guys. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I, just, I think uh, I, I would still rather yeah. use the Panzers in that case. Mm. Well, I don't have the Panzers, and I just recently, when I bought the Bloid Kreutz Army Box, got that support laser, so I've never had that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to field the Votan 2, the support laser, two heavies, two uh, lights, and when I finally get it, the HQ, mm -hmm. and see what would that army do. I'm extremely... Yeah, uh, I absolutely can get behind that idea, because mm -hmm. the, the thought of just building a laser army and yeah. going all out with that that's that's absolutely freaking awesome yeah. yeah very thematic but if you if you think of it in like game balance terms i don't think that's a tournament army i wouldn't i would not want to go to a tournament with that because there's too many things that you just don't handle that well you can't handle uh, infantry swarms that well you can't handle in, uh, aircraft that well um, so no, no, no you, you need anti air and you need artillery yeah, yeah, but and those things they don't have, or you you have the tropical uh, little um, Heinrich thing, but that doesn't handle infantry. That's why I I always bring Rolf nowadays and mm. his. Uh, but again, boys. in a, in a format like uh, the Linköping tournament, yeah. where you have no faction bonus and you mm. can swap mm -hmm. a few points, that could be an interesting army to, to bring in that yeah, case. Yeah. Actually, um, any other ideas for units that that you would like to change? <sighs> Yeah, well, I since I I feel like the the Teslas when they nerfed it down because a few people were a little bit too whiny in certain areas of the world. Uh, they were, uh, I think, they also they don't make the Tesla weapons uh, usable against infantry. I sincerely don't think so. Perhaps uh, infantry force you can Tesla that would be semi-interesting although the frogs still keep on going so who gives a fuck uh, but so so i would like to, uh, to would like to do something with the teslas against infantry uh, it's nice that they have the same stats but perhaps you should have more dice against infantry um for some reason or something else could be done that it, if an infantry it it's enough just to hit it to stop it as it were, from the beginning or something, and okay, from the vehicles you have to make damage or something. And then, of course, they have to look at the uh, phaser weapon, because the phaser isn't working. Uh, yeah, but yeah. this is more like changing rules of the game, yeah, not changing yeah, a specific unit to something else or, or swapping abilities on a unit. No, I, I, I yeah. hear you. Uh, mm. But at least, okay, the... Uh, Oh, well, yeah, but I, I don't think the phaser rule itself is the problem. I think it's the units they are attached to <laughs> that might mm. need some kind of tweak. And mm. that—that that yeah. what was I was You're thinking true. of was the uh, the heavy kill squad for the allies. Mm. And ma ma basically, all the uh, the uh, paratrooper soldier three for the mm. allies, because at the moment they just don't work. I've never seen them work uh, in well. They can do, mm -hmm. if you're lucky. But mm -hmm. usually what happens when you try that, they look so cool and they look so heavy and they look so buff and they get blown away immediately. Yeah. So they, I don't really know what you would do with them, unfortunately, but I, because I don't think it would help to make them cheaper because they would still just be mowed down by yeah. infantry swarms. Oh, definitely. They, they would definitely be killed against... Uh, I would say that uh, the, the kill squad, they have the uh, submachine gun phasers. That, those are probably mm -hmm. the best of the yeah, uh, handheld actually, phaser yeah, weapons. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. The, the other guys, the uh, commando unit, yeah. it's called commando unit, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, they very, I, I, I play them from time to time because I... I think they look cool and are fun, but mm -hmm. they are uh, not doing that much work. <laughs> they tend to get low yeah, down. They, yeah. they should perhaps get a range 8 and a little less damage. That would be nice. Because if they would do 1-2 against vehicles and 2-1 against infantry, so they can put, be put down further away and sniper out things, because they got, the phaser can do that for you, then perhaps you could do things with those, because 3-1 isn't enough 
to do damage that much on the attacking infantry, as you say, because you're so close when it's only six away and people move so fast nowadays. But if you can stand a little bit way back and perhaps also use the height advantage with them, of course, it gets even more uh, height advantage. It ain't working at all. I'm sorry, that's, that's just useless. No, it's the, no because no, it's not useless. No, no, it's good for you to stand up high to be s supported. But I mean, since it, they take away the cover, it, no, yeah, you, you since think the you, errata, they uh, the the enemy needs to re-roll their save. No, it no, but the facers take away the cover. I mean, yeah, faces so, take away the cover, yeah. and and if you are higher, the target gets to re-roll successful saves. So you're thinking yeah. of the original uh, height advantage rule? No, no, no. I'm thinking about the facers because they. You don't get save when you get shot by. Yes. Yeah, you get infantry save when you're shot by the phasers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because we, yeah. So so and the, those you have to re-roll. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And I, no, no, I'm I'm 100 with you on the on the new uh, height advantage rules. That's not the problem. I made uh, we don't we play phasers so little that I actually made it in my mind that they took away infantry save it as well. So it ah, had I no see. save yeah. against the. Facer, but that's of course true. It's just the cover that's removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these, yeah, those commando guys, uh, they, they, I agree, they would need something, um, possibly longer range or a little bit because they don't shoot enough against the infantry to be effective, and also they don't really shoot enough against vehicles to be that effective. So I, mm. I don't really have a cure actually either. Either make them cheaper or longer range or both or I don't know redesign them all together. Yeah, yeah, but it, it just it just gets you, you get that feeling that you have been since I only had those commandos and not the uh, kill squads. Kill squads. Then I have always put them in f in the heat of the action, and that is of course useless. Perhaps yeah. even they can take out units, and I have been played plus minus one, so to speak, plus minus zero uh, in games with them. But I think you, those are units that you have to drop further back. Uh, but then I, well... Yeah. yeah, that's actually the only time I've had some success with them is when I've played very defensively with those commando units and, and mm. basically used them to guard objectives and to... To kind of snipe out the last couple of infantry guys or the last damage on a vehicle uh, but still there are too many points to use for that mm, personally yeah, yeah. i would use something like five six points for that role to just you know as a safety uh, in the uh, in the far back of the uh, of your field <clears throat> but these guys are like 12 points or something yeah mm -hmm. 11 yes. 12, like 12 points yeah. and it's um, no that's a bit too expensive for that role so i have i have no idea really how to use them effectively actually mm -hmm. uh, they are difficult uh, but the kill squad is almost there for me i've used yeah. them a lot and they can even if they don't you know do that much even if they don't like bring back the points as people t tend to mm, yeah, yeah to say mm -hmm. They are such a big threat because they shoot a lot against a lot of things. They shoot enough. I wouldn't say a lot, but they shoot enough. And with the phasers, they can be a real danger, actually. So I, I concur wholeheartedly. Uh, I didn't buy them uh, back in the day because they couldn't parachute in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I went all in and bought is it four of the other squads mm -hmm. so I could do the platoon and everything. If I would have known that the kill squad would have arrived later on as paratroopers i would have bought two of each because mm -hmm. that would have been much more interesting and yeah uh, who knows perhaps one can play four of each or something like that in somewhere in the future and uh, make it work but i, I uh, it's hard i think yeah we'll see mm, yeah all right next question comes from our good friend Loki yeah, from norway and uh, well it's kind of a long question so i'm going to kind of condense it and he's he's basically asking how does the allied heavy destroyer platoon actually work yeah it's um, <laughs> rules master <laughs> <laughs> it's um, uh, i don't know not super clearly stated but i think i think a lot of questions have been asked and answered about this platoon and um um 
the, the leader of the platoon, the platoon commander, uh, he can use the skill and put a move stimulant. And that is, it works exactly as the medic skill and... And that's not really in the rule book, that clarification. No, but no. Uh, when you use the medic skill, you put a token on. And when the, the unit with the token activates, you roll to see what kind of stimulant it was. Either a move or an attack stimulant or your choice. And in this case, it becomes automatically a move stimulant. And when the vehicle with this move stimulant activates, you immediately remove it. I mean, this happens the next time that vehicle activates. So part of, his, part of Loki's question is, when, when does it take effect? How long does it stay on the unit? And it stays on the unit until it activates the next time. So it can be this turn or it can be the next turn or whatever. If it activates or gets reactivated or whatever. Next time it activates, you remove the token and the move stimulant take effect. And the effect is exactly as if a medic would have put a stimulant and then you rolled for move uh, and got the move stimulant. So that means that the next time... Uh, when when it's active, that that activation, if you do a move action, then it counts as a march move. Yeah. So you can do another action, yeah, so either the, after or before. Yeah. So that, the, the unit with the token can either march move and attack, or it can attack and then march move, basically. Yeah. So that's kind of a way to get around that thing that we talked about earlier, that these are usually pretty slow vehicles, and that's a way to get around it, maybe? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But this uh, this platoon does not use... It's the um, the six-shooter and um, bulldog platoon. It's yeah. not with the, the Punisher. Oh, yes, yes. So, yeah, so I mixed up so those with these the, uh, guys, with the These yes. walkers are slightly faster. They're not mm. that fast. But no. with this platoon, uh, you can actually do some interesting uh, kind of hit and run or at least push up the board fairly quickly and put some pressure on it. Especially, I would say, with the... Uh, uh, the bulldog because it doesn't have that long of a range, uh, despite being quite a big gun. Yeah, and I, I I like that this platoon exists, but I seriously now because this platoon came before the new rules. So I, I um, with the new rules, I mean of course with the raid. I think it would be much interesting, uh, much more interesting if they could be given the raid rules so they can pop in and shoot. Perhaps that was even more important when there were five because they couldn't take damage. Now that they're opted up to six, uh, or since a while back they were opted up to six, they can take much more punishment and they are so much more um, durable. So perhaps, uh, well, I, I don't think anyone has played them with this uh, platoon uh, after the upgrade to sixes. I think as I just played them before and so yeah, I, I have not tried this platoon. I I do have two of those heavy walkers, but only one of them is painted. So I've mm-hmm. kind of hold hold off until until I get the second ready. Then of course it's the problem that you have to have the command squad have to try to join up, and if the the other two start running away from them, they, this can only be done once. Uh, so you have to send one away at a time almost. Uh, no, but you have. Mm. Um, but uh, it's okay with the radio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you, you, this is just a command thing for them. Yes. Okay. You now can, you, you can use burn this. Oil. You can use this ability uh, over the radio. So there's no, there's no. Because um, you can't stimulate over the radio. Uh, no, you can't. No. But, so but this, this is, is an exception for this. Yeah. Yes. This is a special exactly. action. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a special okay, action. Good. Sorry. Then, then I missed that one. I've, I've it's, always. It's not limited to range uh, two or range uh, adjacent or something like that. Okay. There, there you go. There you go. I'm learning something new every day. Thank you for that one. <laughs> uh, then, well, well, that makes it even more yeah, interesting. It's, yeah. it's a bit interesting, and I've been thinking about it. But yeah, since I I only have one of these heavy walkers painted yet, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I I have not tried it. I'm sure I will sometime in the future when the next one is ready. Yeah. All right. Next question comes from Seth Squires. And Seth asks, now that we know that the Merc Silence is lost to an accident, what dust figure will you build your proxy from? And uh, for those who haven't heard about this, uh, Silence was a mercenary unit that was given away as a tournament prize. 
uh, about two years ago. Mm. And uh, after that, she just kind of disappeared. And people wonder, well, when is this going to be released? And we never got a real answer. Well, it's coming. It's coming later. We don't really know when. And now we've heard that actually the original mold for the model has been damaged. Uh, So she will not be reprinted, at least not with the same model. So she has to be created again from scratch. And that's going to take a while. Okay, I did not know this. No, so if you have one of the original Silence, then count yourself lucky. That's now a collector's item. (laughs) Well, you know, I'm probably wrong about this as well, but I just got the impression when we were in Belgium and got the Silence that it was said that this is a one-off because it was a Belgium who made it and it was a special thing for Belgium with Belgians in Belgium and everything <laughs> was just like Belgium. So it was like, this is not never going to exist ex- outside of the tournament. And I love that idea that they actually had minis, even though they can be frustrated. Uh, but uh, So I, I had no problem when it was extremely hard to get the bullseye as well. Uh, to me, uh, you know, I don't think you can get hold of Rick Ives. Uh, except if you suck her up to him like you did, Johannes. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, well, that, that's that's a bit different because that's mm. not an official mini. That was a fan made thing. Yeah, that was not made by the studio. No, right? I but, cast but in they, metal. But they made they, the yeah, card, but, I think. Yeah, but the, the but, card was official. Yeah, I think so. So I think to it's, me, I you think can it's come with fully Ricky. playable. But, yeah, but the actual miniature was not yeah, made I, by I, the I, studio. No, no, but it's the same thing with Silence. Silence wasn't done by the studio. Yes, At it least, was. Yes, it was. Okay, I'm pretty right. sure about well, that. Let's because agree because it, to yeah, disagree. <laughs> because it it was available as a premium model. Well, I'm. Th- so, I just think they may. I just think they had a few over, leftovers off the Belgium because they thought there were going to be more players. Because this was a second Belgium year anyway, and it was a now letdown the, on players. The, the mold for it has been damaged uh, somehow, yeah, so yeah, well, they can't make it anymore. Yeah. So, so, so personally, I, I think it's good. So what Seth is asking is, uh, what model would you make a proxy from if you want to play with this um, this model, this unit? Uh, well, I, at the moment, I have no plans of playing with the unit, so I can't <laughs> really answer that. But if I remember correctly, she is she, uh, Silence was sort of, I don't know, Ninja-like... Yeah, she's sort, she's sort she's of. Yeah. Well, yeah, she, she's a sniper that has uh, the uh, react, uh, re, uh, expert reactive fire, what do you call it, you know, the advanced reactive fire. Yeah. So, and she has that rifle that shoots quite long, eight. So it was yeah, actually... Wasn't she, she had like a bodysuit or something? Yeah, she, exactly, she, like she a jumpsuit. A and, uh, yeah, yeah, so well, I yeah. am, I'm immediately thinking about uh, the upcoming uh, Japanese hero. Oh, yeah, you, I'm sorry, you're trying to answer the question. I, I was yeah. uh, way off. Uh, I can't really remember exactly how, I mean, the poses, if it will be possible or difficult or mm-hmm. easy or whatever, but... It's not going to be exactly of, uh, the same, of course. Yeah, but, nah, but I mean, yeah, if you maybe you could use Wang Ziwong and, and just uh, cut off her weapons and then put a rifle in her hand somehow. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, so, the, yeah. of course, there's uh, when it comes to conversions, there's also always a lot of mm-hmm. options. You can look outside of dust models as well. There's a lot of third-party uh, stuff to get where just... Find a model that you think looks the part <laughs> and mm-hmm. use that until we get a new version of Silence. So there's a lot you can do. All right, next question comes from Adam Pullman. And Adam asks, what one unit vehicle, creature or hero that has not seen the light of day would you most like to see the studio release? Uh, I think we have talked about this, or at least a similar kind of question uh, earlier. Um but if you just go kind of a quick um, kind of retread of that, <laughs> do you have any yeah, thing well, that sticks out? L- last time we, we got a sort of similar question. Uh, I said um, landing craft to be able to make, especially when we're going into the Pacific. Yeah. That would be nice. 
Uh, and we are kind of getting that in a way uh, with the Japanese walkers with uh, detachable boat things. But now we also know that those detachable uh, boat hulls are not going to be included with the actual models. That's going yeah. to be a, yeah, but a was, special was, was kind of exclusive of the, add-on. But yeah, uh, more of the like traditional uh, landing crops. Yeah, for both and for... that has been available before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There was a dustified kit available a few years back yep. for the Allies uh, yep. that used the, that land. The craft LCM uh, 36 or whatever the designation was there. Mm. So it, it's not out of the realm of possibility, no, definitely. No, there is an official card for that unit, uh, but I would like to see like a, a regular normal kit primed or a model kit or something like that. And um, yeah, to be able to do those kinds of scenarios, that's that would be awesome for me. Um, but yeah, to, to give a... Uh, yeah, we, we now have a new question, which is similar to the old question, and I'm immediately also thinking about more kind of historical vehicles. We are now, we have seen the E-tanks and some, uh, some other heavy tanks coming, and that is awesome. <laughs> and I hope they bring some, some more of that stuff. I really like that uh, they don't have to be 100% historical for me to be happy. For example, the E-type uh, e e -type tanks. I think those are amazing. I yeah, think and I, I so absolutely love that direction that they take the the real life uh, versions of those that were still just on the planning stage and just think, well, what is what what will happen if this project would actually finalized? Yeah, and, and I mean, with the VK and everything, and just see exactly spinning and those, it. And uh, uh, there are a lot of those uh, Tamaya kits that you can get uh, in, in premium from Dust Studio, like the Humbers and and stuff like that. Uh, and I would just like to see more of that. It doesn't have to be tanks. You can use all sorts of armored mm -hmm. cars or or other stuff. Yeah. Um, I yeah I like the the World War Two vehicles, so that's what I'm hoping for mostly. Um, yeah, just, and for, for me it's basically more or less the same. Just the uh, the mouse specifically. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. absolutely love to see a dustified version of the mouse. With mm -hmm. yeah. well, well it could, could be a, a big laser gun. It could be some other kind of modification, but just take the idea of the mouse and spin that a few, <laughs> a yeah. few rounds with with yeah. the ideas and see what comes out of it. That could be really awesome. And just want to connect with the landing rafts. Uh, why not uh, rubber rafts, uh, rubber uh, boats mm -hmm. that you could uh, take to certain scenarios for? It's a little bit. Connecting with the you know that special upgrades we they talked about a few years ago, uh, you could have those upgrade cars and why not just have uh, rubber rafts for your infantry troops for if you play a water scenario so you can come with your or hovercraft. Rock. Yeah, yeah, that of course. Yeah, you you want a hovercraft in the in in the end sometime soon. Uh, and and as, especially be, if we're going to like. Uh, like the Louisiana Bayous, which has mm, yeah. been in the uh, in the actual lore, so mm, definitely, mm -hmm. yeah, VK powered hovercraft. Oh mm, yeah. yes, <laughs> now you're talking. So that's yeah. Th there's awesome. a lot of possibility. And finally, we have a question from Troy Tepes who asked, "What does your ideal Axis army looks like?" Well, this is a it, very big question. It looks I would say. awesome. That's yes. my answer. <laughs> uh, and the, the first uh, kind of issue I have with this uh, question is, how do you define ideal in this case? Is it just like you said, minus? Is it just because of looks? <laughs> is it how it performs? Uh, yeah, tournament-wise, is it like uh, the fluff behind it? Yeah, yeah I'm what not sure. Your ideal. <laughs> I'm not sure what Troy means here. If it's the looks or if it's the the army composition, if he's going to a tournament yeah. uh, or not. I get the feeling that he kind of means that. If you want to put put a really good, yeah, gameplay wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, I can say for 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 uh, me who has played a lot of Axis in tournaments, um, what works for me most uh, with my play style and. Uh, <coughs> with just the, the units I have, is the kind of standard Endac uh, swarm army. Mm -hmm. um, I just love how it plays, I love how it looks, and there's, uh, there's quite a lot of different uh, units that you can take depending on what you think you will face. So there's a lot of possibilities in there. Uh, however, I wish I would be 
more confident in bringing the old Wehrmacht Soldier 2 units because they still look freaking awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I, I'd like to just uh, make do a shout out for two things. First is the Walker Platoon where uh, you take two Ludwig and a Lothar. That is so much possibilities, especially when you have that uh, possibility to get uh, move and fire. Uh, you can't play uh, to 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 try to use that all the time. You should just play like you didn't have it, but when it kicks in, you get that added bonus that makes you go bop up in that turn. And if you do that, it, you of course it's even funnier if you build a lot of those or branch out and have a lot of walkers. But just those three, whatever you take with those three, will benefit from that platoon. I would say I think that is an ideal. Uh, German platoon altogether. Yeah, it's a very nice platoon. Very versatile and uh, those Ludwigs are good walkers even if you never succeed with this uh, move and fire role. I, I've seen it, it used it, against me and I've used it. So it, yeah, it's just so, you. So man. bringing it's just three you. of those, uh, yeah. it's uh, it's not a bad idea actually. No. Um, to answer his question, I w- I'm basically agreeing with Johannes here. Uh, if you want to build a powerful Axis army, I think Endak yeah, ca- currently that's... is the way to go. Oh yeah. Uh, if you want, yeah, if you want a good tournament army, yeah. uh, if you're not that concerned, if you don't, you know, you don't have to build the the most powerful, you can basically bring whatever you want because most of the Axis stuff is sort of um, uh, like stable. There aren't yeah. too many really bad things. Uh, there, there are a lot of units in the Axis army that can handle almost everything, at least passably. Yeah, if you are, I would say, if you are building a Blutkreuz army, you have to think a little bit more because you need some, uh, some. There, there are some gaps that you have to fill. You need some anti-aircraft stuff. We've yeah. talked about this before a lot yeah. of times. Yeah. So and uh, and in, uh, the other spectrum, you have the Luftwaffe, which can be very spiky with because mm. of the uh, the luck factor with the drops. But there have been a lot of players uh, recently that have had a lot of success with the Luftwaffe by playing defensively with mm-hmm. their drops. Don't drop your vehicles or your units right in the middle, if, even if it's tempting. Drop them a, while, a bit back and then move up because you, you basically use that drop as uh, like a march move, but mm-hmm. with more flexibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good way. Uh, also, I'd like to just have a little shout out for the Koenigs Lothar. Oh, yes. Uh, because I think too few people are playing it too, too seldom. And definitely, if I had it at uh, Linköping last, I think Ulf would have had another game. Uh, it would have had a, <laughs> definitely, even though it was bad weather. So, sorry. Yeah. Coming back to it. It owns me. It owns me. <laughs> so, sorry. I don't know what yeah, I from. really <laughs> like the, the Koenigs Lothar as well. Unfortunately, I don't own one yet. It's you been, don't? No, I don't. The, the, the number it's... one Axis player who was the <laughs> Axis uh, proclamator of, of yeah, Sweden. I, I, you know, w- way back I did not get it uh, when when I had the chance, sort of, uh, for for reasons. And now it's been kind of difficult to get hold of a little bit, but I know it's coming back. Should so. I bring mine out so you can touch it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you don't remember, but I actually borrowed your once, and uh, yeah, yeah, I had to wash it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, All right. I, I will definitely get one of those when, yeah. whenever I'm ready. Uh, good. All right, so let's talk about our photo contest. Yay. Yeah, it's finally time to pick a winner. Uh, well, not pick, we're going to select one randomly. But still, there's been uh, a lot of interest in this uh, contest, which uh, I'm not surprised because the uh, the prize for this is really, really cool. Yeah. And uh, there's been a, quite a lot of interest and creativity in, in the uh, submissions, I think. Um, one thing that I find of particular interest is that a lot of the entries are actually fe- featuring the mythos. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked through all the the photos here, uh, and yeah, some really cool shots, and yeah, surprising amount of mythos. Yeah, there there are are, is, are there any specific uh, pictures that you think stick out in one way or another? Uh, so this um, 
uh, I can't. Who was this uh, with the the big city? Uh, oh yeah, uh, I think I know what you mean. This the uh, Eric Johnson one with the all the units and the, in the kind of alleyways and. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one. Those yeah, that's, that's some it. Just looks amazing. Really cool stuff. That looks so cinematic and uh, yeah, absolutely awesome. Yeah. Uh, speaking about cinematic, I think also Art, Art Wallace. Contribution should be considered that's uh, talking about the landing crafts. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And all of these pictures are going up on our webpage, uh, so you can look through them and see all the submissions. There's some really, really cool ones in there. And that mat there for the landing crafts, I, yeah. uh, that with the uh, squares on, I mean, uh, that's what I want he, he, them to. He, he's got squares on it. Yeah, there are yeah, squares. Oh, sorry. They're oh, very, yeah. very subtle, sorry, but sorry. there are squares. I, I, I believe that he said that this one uh, was custom printed for him with uh, with this pattern. Uh, do, so. we, do we trade the, the price for one of those mats? <laughs> no, no, sorry. We, we are not biased like that. We're not corruptible. <laughs> of course we're not. But that would... Uh, oh, I would like one of those mats. That's... Oh, well, yeah. yeah. And uh, another one that I really like is uh, from uh, Clint Trice. Which kind of shows uh, a procession through a deserted desert town, yeah. but with the twist that we have some allies going to ambush the marching as- axis. This yeah. another one of those really cinematic and mm-hmm. really really cool shots. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we're, but- we're going to, like I said, we're going to put all of these submissions up for so people can look through them and just it will be, be a, inspired. Yeah, and it would be a great uh, slideshow for someone uh, to have on their computer when they're demoing or perhaps print those and then have them in a, a folder so people can look through them. I, yeah. I think this will be really, really good inspiration material. Yeah. And uh, another one I also wanted to say, Michael Montelongo, co- one of the co-hosts of Radio Swiss Vergrad, he kind of made a good use of Photoshop skills. <laughs> And made what looks like an authentic uh, photo <laughs> from the 40s. Yeah. With the uh, Sturmkönig battling a few Axis planes. It's, yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. It looks like something out of some, uh, like, war. Uh, yeah, some classic 40 so, uh, yeah. type. Uh, Maybe he film. went back in time to 1947 and yeah. this is what it actually looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, you know, that it's all a cover up that uh, we don't have dust in the real world. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's get to the big moment where we select our winner. This, uh, like I said before, this is done by just random selection, so there's absolutely no bias. And I'm going to click the button now. The winner of the Wang Si Wong pre-production mini is Christopher Wingenback of the United States. Congratulations! Congratulations. Yay! (laughs) So we are going to get this out for you as soon as possible. A big congratulations to you. And of course, for all of you who didn't win this time, check out dustboardjournals.com and check out our uh, army box giveaway. There's still... If you listen to this uh, at least uh, two weeks after we have released it, there's still time to get in on that. So, what do we have next? <laughs> now we have some tournament talk. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk a bit about LDD, mm-hmm. which uh, you, Ludo, was uh, part of. Yeah, um, it was a great experience uh, because it was uh, very different. Uh, it was... I had only just uh, tried with the normal rules for weather before. Uh, so yeah, and we, sh- we should, before we go <laughs> any further, we should clarify that this is the tournament that we talked about earlier. The yeah. Lin Shopping Days of Dust LDD, that's what it stands for, so yeah. it's no confusion there. Yeah. Uh, I, I also like to say that I love that that uh, Days of Dust has been spreading. I've seen a lot of uh, uh, tournaments around the world who has added that to their tournaments as well, so I, I think that's good that that catched on. Uh, but um, going to the tournament itself... Uh, the <laughs> it was good and it was a little bit frustrating playing it because the weather was stayed the same during the whole game. Uh, in, in normal cases, it sw- shifted back and forth, back if and I, forth. If I understood correctly, like the tournament organizer rolled yeah. dice 
before each uh, round of the tournament. Yeah. And okay, so now we have bad weather. And for the entire game, that bad weather, weather was. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So you did not change during each no. match or something. Okay. And for those armies they were that had the, the upper hand with bad weather, they got a real upper hand because they had it come in. Uh, uh, fighting, as I said before, infantry with uh, Vortans is bad. Uh, if you can only see six squares, it's even worse. So if the weather would have shifted, my Vortans would have been a little bit better sometimes. On the other hand, I had zombies. So in some types, some of the games, my zombies were having the upper hand because my opponents couldn't see me so well. So mm -hmm. I'm not complaining at all about that. But it... it, it, it um, yeah, I, I think can see it, pros and cons yeah. there. I, be, be, I mean, every game was not bad weather, right? It was no, some but game I think with... it was like three was severe bad, one was bad, and one was clear. So right. it, it was still very right. much a bad weather tournament. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good humored, but bad weather. So, um, well, uh, but, but mo the most important thing is that uh, if, if you just think about it a little bit more next time, you can make that sideboard work a little better for you than I had. Yeah. Of course, the first time you try a completely new format, then of course you don't have all the kinks worked out. Definitely, definitely. Uh, but but it seemed to me that Kalle would uh, keep it, that, that with the weather uh, at least played one or two times more. So that's good. And as we talked about earlier, that uh, 25 extra sideboard is an interesting thing to play with. So perhaps that is I, catching on as well. Yeah, I can really see this. Uh, I, I, I like the sound of the format, even mm. though I haven't tried it yet. And I also like to use uh, the weather rules because they, at least for us, we haven't really used them that much. I think uh, I have never played with them in a tournament. I've played them a couple of times maybe in... Um, in just casual games uh, but I'm thinking if you are having a tournament with let's say four rounds of gaming uh, let let one or two of them at least be clear normal weather and mm, yeah. for yeah something like half you know it's gonna be bad weather and and just randomly roll to see how bad will it be <laughs> Yeah, perhaps that's something to take with uh, to the next time that perhaps if you've had two games already with extreme bad weather, you know it won't be extreme bad weather on the last two rounds, perhaps if it's four turns, then it perhaps could be just so that it you don't tilt the board to mm -hmm. one side. Yeah. Because um, uh, I... I Again, yeah. I, I fall back to that a lot with variation. Uh, I've said it multiple times before, uh, and I think for me that would be a, a good way of doing it, uh, using the weather rules, you know, like half the times or something. So it's mm. going to be yeah different. Just for fairness, and you want that in tournaments because otherwise you get. Yeah, because a lot of some, are, yeah, spans, some armies really like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you, you want fairness and you want variation. Yeah. Because you don't want the exact same match three uh, times in a row. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Basically. So, uh, mm -hmm. you also had a short uh, interview with uh, one of the organizers. Luda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kalle, uh, who was also, because he was at in Finland and doing the Robocon. So, I tried to uh, do... Uh, a little bit of an interview. Unfortunately, we got a little mix up before the tournament, so I didn't get the mic with me. So the, the sound quality might be a little bit poor. But, uh, well, take a listen, and perhaps you can take something out of uh, Kalle's uh, stories about Finland and about how he felt that the LDD worked.
So, this is Lutta for Dust War Journals. We're sitting here in Lin Shopping, just uh, finishing off the uh, LDD6, Lin Shopping Days of Dust, number six. And I'm joined here with uh, Kalle, who's been the organizer for this uh, wonderful tournament. Uh, hi, Kalle. How's everything after the tournament? Hi. I'm quite knackered after this tournament, but a bit good fun. We were 14 players, which is a bit of a record for LDD. So, uh, Kalle, yeah, you've been growing now for uh, every year, actually. And now this was so special about this year. There was a lot of new homegrown Linköping citizens who were here. Uh, we have had uh, some great tournaments with good guys here, uh, good numbers, but uh, they have been from outside of Linköping. This time you have uh, found the homegrown talents. Yes, we've been working quite quite hard to get new people in, and in this tournament we had four people who hasn't had been playing dust at all. That was the first tournament, and one of the players actually played his first real game last Thursday, and he came to the seventh place out of 14. And one of the top three was also one of the new players. Yeah, I was really impressed by all the new players here. And one can always, uh, for those who don't know, Kelly, you've been doing demos, you've been doing tournaments since, uh, I mean, for a couple of hundred years or so now. Uh, do you ever tire of organizing tournaments and uh, events like this? No, I'm quite uh, one of those people who just like to do something for, for other people and it probably started with some games but if, if I go and play I have to organize myself and take it from there so I'd really like to show the game it's a really good game and it's quite easy to get into what's the biggest reason why you want to be a tournament organizer what's, what's the most you take out of a tournament like uh, this it doesn't have to be a dust tournament now it could be any type of tournament but why these amount of tournament organizations that you do? Uh, I think I just like uh, organizing things. I mean, we've been running uh, co conventions and other tournaments and all the preparations beforehand and even during the game and see the joy of people actually playing. So let's uh, look a little bit on this tournament we just had here, the LDD6. It was a what a special tournament. You had some uh, special option in this tournament. Can you tell us a little bit about it? And uh, yeah, and after that, you can also please tell us what you thought of the outcome of the special things we were doing in this tournament, please. Yeah, I wanted to do something different in this uh, tournament. So we starting using weather, which we haven't used in any tournament in Sweden before. So I ruled for weather before the start of the game, and that weather condition lasts throughout that uh, entire game. And we also use a sideboard, 125-point armor list, and a sideboard of 25 points, but took out of this 10% uh, bonus. So just 125 plus an extra 25 points on the side. Yeah, so the weather was rolled once for every game, and it stayed the same all through the game. And then, uh, when then when we knew the game, we, we when we knew the weather, of course, I should say, we, we were allowed to switch. So the ones of us who had paratroopers who couldn't land in severe weather, we were allowed to take other troops, so we didn't get penalized for the for the weather. Yes, you could do, do the matchup when you know what scenario you're going to be playing, what weather you had. What, what your opponents had on their list, and you simultaneously select which models you wanted to play with. And how do you feel that this tournament went? Uh, did it work out the way you hoped? Uh, did you learn something, or are you going to do it exactly the same thing next time? Or, uh, yeah, what, what's your outtake? There are probably a few things you can tweak on, but I think most people were quite happy with this, this sideboard thing and playing with the, the weather thing. So. I quite happy to come, but there's always things you can do a bit better I want to have analyzed it afterwards. Yeah, and as you regular listeners know, I love when some do something different, so I'm all for this. I'm very excited. I was very excited beforehand. I'm very excited afterwards that we did it, so I'm very thankful to you, Akala, to organize this tournament. Uh, I can't praise it enough. Uh, I learned a few things myself how I should not do next time, so I sincerely hope that in somewhere in the future you will do this once more. 
definitely. I think that's a winning concept. We're probably going to use whether in one or another form, so you're going to analyze if this was the right way to do it. And the sideboard, rather than having two lists, which we just have in some, some other tournaments. But I prefer one main list and a sideboard where you can swap some units to t take into account what you're going to face. Yeah, uh, yeah, it feels a very good and interesting way to have a tournament. And now we're going commando. No, no, you don't have to switch off your computers. You won't see any pictures of me and Kalle in our underwears. That will be another day. Aww. Well, you just have to imagine it. But why do we go commando now? Because I'm sitting here with, I think, the first commando in Europe, or the one that were used doing the first commando raid, so to speak. Is that true, Kalle? Well, I think it's, uh, I'm the first commando, and I've started doing this, running demos in, in the club. And running this tournament is part of it. And I also went to Finland a couple of weeks ago, uh, big commercial called Rupicon, and helped out to run some demos over there. Yeah, and we, I'm so ashamed of this because me and Johannes should have been with you in Finland, but for one other reason, we were up, held back in just the last moment, actually, well, we could say. But um, tell us a little bit more about Rostcon. Uh, why was this so important convention for Dust? I think it's to show off the, the game because there's no shop in Finland at the moment uh, stocking Dust, but we had that one of the storeholders for one of the bigger stores was I can have had a demo and it's probably gonna take this into the shop. And Rupicon is a really large convention with a few thousand participants. And we were running demos basically non stop since we started. So it was me, Lexa, the Finnish guy and another commando and we managed to get one of his friends to show. So I run a demo for his friend and then he helped us demo throughout the convention. Ah, great. Uh, okay, sorry cutting you off there, but the instant love from his friend then for the game itself. Absolutely. So now we get, get this is his arm as well. So at least it's 100% more Finns that play the game afterwards than it was from before. Uh, and we don't have to do the math. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm all for it. It's 100% better. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, but what, what, the, what was the... Um, biggest differences from uh, the Finnish uh, convention style uh, if you compare it to the Swedish conventions you're used to going to here in Sweden? Uh, in Sweden you not normally have convention in uh, school or university but at uh, Rupicon they actually hired a big uh, exhibition center so we were playing in a big big hall, so a lot of things going on around us, like an exhibition. But I didn't think it was a bad thing, because you had quite a lot of people passing through, as you are sitting playing, it got interesting, we had quite short demo games, so people could just try it and move on, and after a while people came back and they could actually try a full game. Ah, great, so they didn't just try it once, they tried it twice, uh, if I get it. A few people tried even three or four times. Even better. Then we know there's a growing market now in Finland. So great to hear. Uh, is there anything more you can tell us about the perhaps the, the way they do things different in Finland from what we're used to, uh, or other things you took out from the experience of going uh, all the way, so to speak, to, to Helsinki and uh, doing demos there? Well, I don't think it was that much different from other places. Probably a little bit different how we actually run that's the convention. But yeah, it's uh, good fun. And a lot, lot of people, and most people actually spoke English, which I was surprised because uh, my experience from being in Finland before, as not many people speak Swedish, not very good at Finnish, but yeah, the, the English was really good, so we could run demos without any problems. Great. Okay, so, and then we look forward to next year when Rob com comes back, and perhaps you're going next year as well? Uh, as far as I know now, I plan to go next year, so we'll see what's happening. Oh, great. Then uh, me, Johannes, or Magnus has to shape up and come with you next time at least, so we get a proper on-site report. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, thank you very much for this uh, talking to Kalle. Right. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the upcoming uh, Gothenburg Days of Dust next week. Yeah, I just uh, threw something together here, a 50 points tournament, just because I, I needed to play more games and or just wanted things to happen, because th- at that moment I felt like it was a little bit dead. Uh, I didn't realize that, of course, Ulf and uh, Jonathan had been working for months now with the UDD in the month afterward. So it's it's it's, it's a bubbling. Uh, but uh, it's just uh, 50 points, n- no armor uh, class vehicles uh, above four, no superheroes and no flights, and we only play on one match. I will do... I have four special scenarios for you to play. They are not balanced. They are not well thought through. They are just spontaneous ideas. Hopefully, it'll work. Hopefully, we will have a lot of fun. But don't come to this tournament with the high hopes of too much fairness and too much tournament. I like the regular tournament thing. This is mm-hmm. We play some games. We experience something different. Hopefully, we'll have fun. If it's fuck up okay i'll have to take responsible and try to mend it somehow <laughs> yeah um, and this was kind of with a bit short notice because it's just in one week from now yeah uh, when we're recording uh so but yeah there's still a few days left if you have the time uh on uh, september 8th uh you can bring 50 points and uh, have some fun yeah, yeah. And definitely. I, for me personally i'm really looking forward to this because i think it's gonna be a blast I hope so too, and also just like to mention that it's just like we took fifty points this time. We just you, we need to play four games on one day, and it, we're starting to get a little bit exhausted if we play too high tempo, too big yeah. armies. I I've been thinking about uh, I've wanted to play a tournament with smaller armies for some time now. Uh, I haven't really been able to put something like this together, uh, so I'm super happy that you. You did something with it that you you uh, yeah organize this. It's I think it's going to be super fun. Yeah, so it uh, will definitely have a more detailed tournament uh, report basically. Uh, in, yeah, in, a, in the next episode <laughs> because it's us three and at the moment it's two more. Prob- I think it's one more that we just hasn't registered yet. The one we're speaking right now, and hopefully there will be one or two more so I also can jump in and then uh, well. Yeah, of course, also, there's another reason why it's only 50 points and it's only one-day tournament. On the Sunday, it's the Swedish national election <laughs> for, for parliament. So uh, most of us will be... I, I think most of us who play are voters and don't sit at home and take... Well, for, for me, you, you I, can vote I've already, I've yeah, already done it. So oh, I've already, already voted in, 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 pre- in preparation for it. So mm. it's... I've done my civic duty. Nah, that's good. That's good. Good to hear. Right. Uh, and we, we kind of mention it. We have uh, the UDD or yeah. Uddevalla Days of Dust. And that's uh, it's called the Battle of Uddevalla. Mm, it's going to yeah. be the 13th and 14th of October. And we, we have our contingency there, uh, our contingent there in Uddevalla, just s- scraping out all the terrain pieces on our, yeah, on our chat. Like, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got, um, it's full steam ahead. Yeah, they sent a, a few photos, and it uh-huh, seems like they okay. are building stuff like crazy at the moment. So, oh, splendid! Yeah, that's uh, I be, haven't seen the photos, but uh, I've heard it's going to be. And this is going to be a fairly different to what we've seen before. Very narrative. It's going to be uh, Axis uh, defending the city. Uh, I mean, Sweden in, in dust. Uh, Sweden belongs to the Axis. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, apparently the city of Uddevalla is super important <laughs> and all what? the blocks uh, are uh, fighting about it. Uh, SSU and the allies are attacking. They need to, to get this city and the, the Axis will defend. It sounds uh, really fun and uh, yeah. I, yes. I, I'm personally I'm not sure if I'm free that weekend I'm working on it uh, and I hope I will be able to make it yeah the same unfortunately for me too uh, I have the daughter that weekend and I don't think that this narrative campaign is quite suitable for her but I have ace up my sleeve because it's her my mother it's my daughter's mother's birthday that Saturday and I think she will be screaming for having the child on that Saturday so I think I can swap it around with <laughs> Uh, some ease mm. so I'm, I'm very optimistic that I will be joining the guys in Udvala I really look forward to it uh, but it's still a work in progress <laughs> yeah s- same for me yeah, yeah. And then finally, just uh, a, a reminder of the upcoming Dust Nordic next year. Um, 
it's April 13th and 14th in uh, Gothenburg. Uh, dustnordic.com is the website for the event. Uh, registration has not opened yet because we're still finalizing the uh, kind of last details. But it's going forward. The uh, site has been updated with a bit more information and also a lot of pictures from last year. Mm. So if you want to see a bit about what you might want, what what you might expect mm-hmm. from the yeah. tournament visually, yeah. then go take a look. Interesting. And with that, I think that's all for this episode. Okay. So uh, a big thank you to everyone who is listening and uh, supporting us and just uh, everyone who's playing the game, basically, and just having a good time out there because that's what this uh, kind of crazy venture is all about, I think. Yeah, it's a good time to be a duster. Definitely. Definitely. So big thank you from me, Johannes. And Magnus. And of course, Sasa from Lera. And as usual, we will see all of you on the battlefield. Thank you for listening to Dust War Journals. You can find us at dustwarjournals.com or on social media at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Dust War Journals. And you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.